Hi, Michael here. Uh, in two weeks time we'll be covering a car rally of about 120 cars. Well, they fly around doing their thing, we take a lot of photos and usually three or four thousand photos. I've got about two hours to, uh, to process them so I can present them to the clients that evening. Um, there's only 3,600 seconds in an hour so I've got probably less than two seconds of photo to process them. So to do that I have to have software that really backs me up and to that end I use just some very very basic uh, Linux interfaces. They all, all the desktops um, do you have these built in. Uh, they're basically a, a standard file browser is great for preview and photo viewing programs are well suited to uh, viewing the photos and deleting and culling and rotating very very quickly and I've written a script which actually tweaks the exposure. It checks through the, uh, the images, uh, gets a handle on the dynamic range and makes adjustments according to that. And uh, uh, overexposed photos get reduced, underexposed photos get lifted, uh, shadows are lifted, that kind of thing. So it's all done automatically. But also the photos need to be chopped down to <coughs> a, low, a low enough resolution so the viewing computers can chop through, chop through the photos quickly and the customers are not delayed looking through their photos because they want to see their photos quickly. They do not want to be waiting. They'd rather be going back to their meal and their glass of wine and having a good time. So there is a lot of pressure on us to have the photos ready for them to view but also very, very convenient for them to view. And uh, yeah, I also print on the night so it's, it's a very highly demanding time for me. The photos we um, put on a website, we get about a twentieth of the sales from those. So. Yeah, it's all very important. Anyhow, here's how I do it. Okay, now I've got an example of some photos. Not a rally, but uh, just some stills. And these are of no particular standard. They're just to be viewed. And I've just opened these in the file browser. So what I might be confronted with on a, um, a rally is a few thousand photos. So this is, I don't know, how many photos are there here? 80 items. Okay, so... I'll give you a bit of a sample of how quickly I can run through these things. I'll open the first photo, and if I like it, I just leave it. I can press the right arrow key, and I can flick through them very quickly. If there's something I obviously don't like, like that photo there, has my, um, the top corner here, there's something, probably my, I don't know, sleeve maybe? Maybe I was shadowing the camera to take some sun off the lens or something. Uh, yeah, that's probably what it was. Okay, so that one I want to delete. So I press the delete key. Um, it's asking me whether I want to delete it and I'm going to say yes. But if I press the space bar it ticks that box. Of course I can use the mouse to do the same thing. Now once that box is ticked, um, as soon as I press enter it is moved to the rubbish bin. That's the next consecutive photo. Press the delete key it's gone. So if I go backwards, forwards, those two photos are now missing. So I can quickly go through and cull the photos that I obviously don't like. If there's something here that's... I'm only looking for photos I just want to get rid of, per se. So I might do my initial cull to see if there's anything... I might get rid of that. Uh, anything that's obviously uh, offensive, I'm going to say. Now, as all these events are, are done, they are usually not done in such a way... Um, that will favour a photographer. The cars are placed or whatever they are placed according to what works practically for them but not as far as lighting and so forth. This one happens to be not too bad. I'm not sure which one I'll delete there. Probably leave it at that. might just delete these photos. I'll leave that to show something else. That's it, I've done the lap. So I've done my initial cull. If there was any that needed to be rotated, I could use these rotate buttons and then they would be saved on exiting the program. Okay, so that was very, very quick and handy. So I've done my initial cull. Now, uh, I've written a number of scripts for various processes. But I've got, how many photos we've got now? 74 items, so I've deleted six at the moment. I'm going to launch a terminal so I can run my scripts. Now you can see here, 
I'm at Michael Desktop Example. I'm already logged on as the user Michael. I'm at my home directory, which means I'm at the Michael directory. So I'll go PWD, print switch directory I'm on, and I'm on, so in other words, PWD is for print working directory. PWD is re replying to me, home Michael. So I'm already at Michael. So I'm going to go CD, type capital D, lowercase e. Now I press the tab key, it types out the rest for me. EX, tab key again, it's got me the example typed out. Okay, so I'll just see what's there, and you can see all those photos are in that place. Now, unfortunately, the camera produces an uppercase JPG denotation, and I need lowercase. So what I can use is an automatic renamer. No accessories. There we go. K rename is my favourite. Okay, so let's add some files. Michael, example, where are we? Desktop, example, example, there he goes. Now, for an event, I might actually give them a name. Uh, I'll just so there's all the files. Now this might be a special event name, so uh, destination, I may choose to make a copy. In this case, I'll leave it where they are, I'll re rename them where they are, but often I'll like to make a copy so that if something goes awry, I've got the possibility of recovery. Now, plugins, file name. The first thing I want to do is prefix. Let's say, I don't know, expo underscore. Um, actually, that's wrong. Delete. Use original name. Custom name. Expo. Oh, well, you can use any name you like. And the extension will re use. We need to have an index number, number of digits. I'll give it four digits. to low case don't understand number here we go there we go so it's using four decimal places, so you go zero, 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 0001, and that way you can see it's producing as you scroll down the potential of 9,000 photos. If you needed to have more than that, you bump that up to the number of decimal places you like. That way you keep the same length of file name. So when you go for sorting order, it ascends beautifully. Okay, so that's that done, so if I go finish, It's crunching through it. Close. So now we can see, I'll just click on that. Now we can see we've got a series of numbered photos. So if I go LS here, that will have changed to the new the new file names. Okay, so now all I've got to do is I've one of my scripts is called face event. All I do is type that in. It creates two folders. Now just going to exposure. It's actually reading the dynamic range of the photos and doing a pretty good tweak of how the photos should look. Now these are kept at full resolution. Whatever the camera throws at the system, it keeps in the same resolution. Let's have a look at this one. And you can see the shadow lifts quite good without offending anything. It hasn't actually killed any of the photo. Now you can see this area here, the shadows have been lifted quite nicely. Now I'll compare it to the originals in a second, but for the moment, 
The shadow lifting's been quite good. The general exposure's good. I mean, it is a machine. It doesn't, it can't perceive what your eye may be pleased by. But generally, this uh, converts the images quite neatly so that I don't have many to fix. That's still looping around. It's up to the 37th photo. For me to go through with, say, uh, GIMP or something to edit those photos individually is a big deal. Now, this machine isn't my fastest machine, but it's getting through the photos at about one every one and a half seconds, I'd say. Was it one, two, maybe two seconds, something like that. But you can see it's, it's chomping through them quite well. We had 74 photos. It's already up to 47. But while it's been doing that, it's not only that that it's doing, so it's, it's made the folder called Exposure. It's modifying the photos here, um, exposure-wise. But it's also creating another file called Numbered. Now these are being chopped to 1.5 megapixel. And you can see embedded in the photo is that new file name. So that when the customers are viewing those photos, embedded in there is the file name of the photo, so it's easy for me to find. But these images are substantially reduced. You can see it's 1501 by 1998. Uh, the script keeps the aspect ratio of the original photo. If it's a four-thirds camera, it keeps it that way. If it's a um, six by four type or three by two type um, sensor, it keeps it that shape also. These are three by two because they're Nikons. Um, but the image size has dropped to 1.5 megapixels, so it's very quick for the computer to be able to view through them. You can see that that's uh, flicking through the, the images very, very quickly. Now, there you have that shadow there. So I'll compare that to the original photo. Let's see if we can do that. That's 31. Go back to example. 31, where are you? Okay, that's the original. And that is the automatically tweaked one with my script. So as you can see, the shadowing in the original is extremely dark. But it's retrieved that quite nicely without overcooking it. I think it's done a respectable job. Let's just bring that over and bring this to the fore. You can see the shadows on the fire building and the underline of the roof has been greatly improved without overcooking the glare here. So if I go to print this image, it's much better exposed. You'll probably be able to read that text. Oh, not quite. But it's it's definitely... That's not text, it's music. Okay, so... But you can see that perceptually it's it's actually quite good considering it's just a machine that's done the crunching. How far are we off finished now? Okay, that's actually finished the job of 74 photos. And I basically had very little to do. So you can see this photo is quite problematic. I might just um, find another photo that might be problematic. So here we go. That there is 32. Let's have a look at the exposed number 32. That's the very next photo anyway. Let's see how they... Oh. Wrong one. 32. Comparing that to the original. You can see this area here is much better exposed in my tweak. You can see the number in here so you can tell which one's exposed, which, which one's been uh, processed and which one hasn't. You can see generally there's much better shadow lift. It took me a while to get this script right, but um, Put it this way, they are good enough to present to the customers. If I see something that I want to adjust just on printing, I do a tweak at the last minute on um, you know, a photo editor. But generally, I can print the photos. I very rarely have to tweak them. You can see that's perceptually quite a lot better than that. Anyhow, I hope that was of interest to you. Close this down, see what we've got. Yes, I've got exposure, numbered. And these are our original files. Okay, so the 74 photos have been processed. So their exposure is cleaned up, but still at full resolution. So I would print from these. These ones here, which are numbered, are for the potential buyers to view. And if that's their vehicle and they want a photo of it, they could uh, order it based on that number. And it's very quick for the viewing computers to shuffle through them. As you can see, well, let's just check that one out too. That's interesting, 10. 10.
it's lifted that you know, without overcooking it. It's very easy for these photos to be overcooked so that you get glare that's uh, crazy. Another handy tool, if I was to look at this photo, open it with Shotwell, it's got a auto enhance. You click on it, it's done a pretty good job, but I find sometimes it does go over the top. But if it does, you can go straight into adjustment and tweak. You, know, you might adjust your clipping a little bit harder, might lift the shadows a bit more. But it's very easy to overcook it and, and shot well if you're not careful. You press reset, it restores to what it was. Uh, we can lift the shadows to what we think is sane. But as you can see, the um, automatic script didn't do a too bad a job of keeping it without killing it. Well there you go, there's just a couple of things that I do with open source software. Now the scripting with Linux is particularly easy. Um, I won't show that right now, but this is just enough of a bit of a taster. Uh, I don't need to close that saving. Okay. Well feel free to like, share, subscribe, uh, make a donation. Make a request for a new video you'd like to see. Bye for now.